So we go to decision, uh, we go to decisions, outcomes, and cost. We have to make a decision based on decision tree. So as soon as we finish, as soon as we are able to get our EMV, then it is about making What's decision. EMV? Uh, expected monetary value. We talk, we talked about it previously. So as soon as we have our expected monetary value, then the next thing to do is to make the decision. Either to continue with the project or to stop the project. That is about decision. Then for all outcomes, the EMV gives us what the outcome will be like. So as soon as we have our outcome, the result is what we're talking about here. So outcome is just the result. Then for the cost, the amount of money we have to spend is the cost, right? Can you just stop that please? Yes. So the amount of money we have to spend is the cost, yes? What's the, the last time in five days? Dynamism. Well, no. When finally making. Making, making the decision. Yeah. So for the cost, decision has to be taken. So we know the amount of money we need to spend on that decision we want to take. Our cost, the opportunity cost there is that decision we're not taking. Because we have two decisions. Either to continue with retaining the old campaign or to make a new campaign, right? So if we have to continue with the old campaign, it means the opportunity cost becomes the new campaign that we're not making decisions about. Do you understand what cost is here? That is the economical cost. The new campaign that we're not choosing, that we're not going to spend on. Hello, can you just stop that already? Sorry. You don't get it. The cost. The amount of money we have to spend on that project. So we have decisions about to launch a new campaign or to retain the old campaign. But based on the EMV, we're going to continue with the old campaign. Can you just stop that, please? We're going to, we're going to retain the old campaign. Retaining the old campaign means the opportunity cost will be the new launch, the launch, the new mm -hmm. campaign that we're not launching. You know, we have two campaigns: B and C. Yeah. For B. Or launching a new campaign and for C, retaining the old campaign. So if you are making a decision about retaining the old campaign, the opportunity cost is the new campaign that we're not taking, that we're not doing. That is about cost. Is it clear now? Yes. Now go to the advantages or the merits or importance of having a decision tree. The first one, the construction of the tree allows the business to find out some causes of action that were not previously known. You know, when you make a decision tree, in the course of making that decision tree, at the end of it, you have an EMP. So some things will come up that you never thought about. The success, the failure. You might not as you might not think about them before. But because you are making a decision tree, because you are drawing a decision tree, it might allow you to know what the success rate will be or the failure rate should be. Those things will start coming to your mind based on the outcomes you are getting. Do you understand what I'm saying or not? Yes. yes. Yeah, success and failure. The second point, the first point is to separate important risks from unimportant risks. So we know if we are making the decision about launching the new campaign, so the new campaign is an important risk. But if we are making a decision about launch or retaining the old campaign, then the old campaign becomes the important risk. So the new the new campaign that we're not launching becomes the unimportant risk that we're not taking. Get the point here, we're making a decision either to retain the old campaign or to launch a new campaign. So if the decision is about launching a new campaign, so it is an important risk. The unimportant risk is the old campaign that we are not retaining. So this allows you to take uh, to make a decision about what is important and what is not important. So the risk you are taking now to you is considered to be the important risk. The one you're not taking is the unimportant risk. Because as soon as you're done with your EMV, you, you will have make a decision to choose A or B, or to choose B or C, sorry. So you have chosen B, then B is the important risk. Then you left C, which is unimportant risk. Do we get it, please? Yes. Yes. Hello, please be here. The third point, it's an opportunity for people to have an idea about the particular decision that has been made. So, seeing the diagram, even if you are not part of the decision maker, with the diagram you understand why they have made that decision. Do you get the point I'm making here? The diagram allows us that are not even decision makers to know why they have made the decision. So you have 1.4, you have 2.2. Oh, they choose 2.2 because that is the highest they could get instead of choosing 1.4. The diagram analyzes everything. So even if you're not part of the business or part of the decision maker, you would have seen the reason or you would have known the reason why they took or they made that decision. The last one, since it's about numerical value, it helps to improve decision making. So, because we already know it is 1.4 and 2.2, 2. 
choosing C is 2.2, choosing B is 1.4. So it's important we choose 2.2 because it's a figure that is higher than 1.4. 2.2 is numerically higher than 1.4 in terms of figure. Do you understand the point here? Yes. So we are making the most important decision because we already have the figures. So everybody knows that 1.4 is lesser than 2.2. So we have to choose 2.2. Is it clear? Yes. Then what are the problems about using this young tree? The first one, the technique is impromptu. It is not, it's an estimate. It's not an exact figure. Because it does not happen, it's about to happen. But we are, we are forecasting figures so that we can have at least an image of what could happen in the future. So that's why the information gathered when using the technique is not exact. It is an estimate. So it's not real. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah. But when you talk about inaccurate, why you cannot use inaccurate is that when you use inaccurate, you're already judging the, the outcome. That's why I say you cannot use inaccurate. It is an exact, it's exact or it's an estimate. Do you understand? Yes. The second point, this one might be influenced by different constraints, such as qualitative data. Here, when we talk about qualitative data, we're talking about people's opinion, interest. So, based on my opinion, I might choose 1.4 instead of 2.2. If 1.4 allows me to do a lot of things. So, decision makers might be subjective. That is the point here. Do you get the point I'm making here? People's opinion are uh, people have different narratives. We have different narratives to situation. So because we have different narratives, it means our opinions are dif different. So our narrative will be different. These things can affect the outcome of the decision tree. Do we understand? Yes. yes. The decision tree is a quantitative data, but it could be affected by qualitative data, such as people's opinion, people's interest, government decisions. Is it clear? Yes. The third one. Time lags. When we talk about time lags, the time frame between when we are to, when we are about to take the decision and when we have the data for the decisions available. The decision is going to be maybe we're going to take the decision maybe in March, but we have the, we have information from January. So by the time we get to March, the information we had from January might be outdated. That is time lags. Do you understand time lags here? The time frame between when the decision is being made and when you took or you gathered those information. So those information might not be useful for the decision at during the time you're making that decision. So there's time lag. Do we understand time lag here? Yes. Are we sure of this? Yes. And the last one, dynamism. There's always gonna be different market situation. The market is not gonna remain constant. Things will change. Consumer taste will change. New entrants will come into the business. New entrants will come into the market. Different changes will happen. But these changes are not, are not part of the decision tree. So you're not putting it into consideration when you are making that decision. So the decision tree does not reflect on different, uh, on different situations. So that's why I wrote, the business environment is not stable. The, different, the business environment or the market environment is never going to be stable. Things will change. Income will increase, income will fall. New businesses will come in, new businesses, and these yeah, businesses yeah. will go out. Uh, dynamism. dynamism. So dynamism, brings about uh, unknown circumstances. So there's no stability. So this might affect our outcome in this country. Yes. Is it clear? Yes. Any question about it? Thank so you. that ends chapter 11. Thank, Thank you. you.